Hey, 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 and welcome back to the channel. This is video one of two videos where I'm going to discuss the hardware I'm using for my four degree freedom motion simulator platform. And in the second video, the software setups for a four degree freedom motion simulator platform. Now to refer to how to actually wire up a four degree of freedom motion simulator platform or a three degree of freedom motion sim platform, now I'm talking about the actual techniques needed, stripping wire, soldering, using heat shrink, the right wire, gauges to use, etc. Refer to my channel's playlists and the electronics tutorials that I did earlier um, on the three degree of freedom motion sim platform because the principles are exactly the same. In essence, what you're doing, guys, is you are following two different tutorials from the xsimulator.net site okay one is the rufus doofus tutorial which covers wiring a two degree of freedom motion sim using ibt2 motor controllers and the other is another tutorial on xsimulator.net by a guy called blazing h which covers wiring a saber tooth 2x32 motor controller with two motors okay so my four degree of freedom motion sim uses a combination of IBT2 motor controllers and a Sabre 2 2x32. Now I've had the experience of running a four degree of freedom motion sim with purely using IBT2s, meaning that I had four IBT2s. Two IBT2s for my horizontal motors, which are the surge motor and the traction loss motor, and two IBT2s controlling my front motors which control roll, pitch, heave, etc. I went away from using IBT2s on my front motors which have to carry a lot of load and which draw a lot of amps and I replaced them with using a Sabre 2 2x32. I'm going to briefly talk about why I did that. The main reason guys is that IBT2s they're not designed for regenerative current. Alright, so when your motors are under load, especially your front motors in my design, which carry all of the weight of the top frame of the sim, when they have to move up and down, they're commanded in sim tools and whatever's happening in your game at the time to pitch, to roll, to um, add heave, road surface heave, etc. That causes your motors to draw a lot of amps, okay? With a motion simulator, your motors are frequently commanded to reverse polarity, to change direction, okay? And when they change direction, they send current back to your motor controllers. IBT2s are not really designed for regenerative current, so current that is sent back because of direction changes in your motors, which directly come back to your um, motor controllers. And so your IBT2s are not really designed to cope with that, and they get hot, and they either go into protection mode or eventually they fail. With a Sabertooth 2x32, it's designed to work with regenerative current, okay? So it is a much better option for motors that are under a lot of load, motors that carry weight. That's why I've settled on this combination of using IBT2s for my horizontal motors, my surge motor, and my traction loss, because both of those motors don't have to actually carry load, they're on bearings. My Surge rail system is on bearings, and of course the traction loss is on bearing wheels. So they never see big amps, or when the polarity is reversed on the motors, they don't see big current spikes coming back to them. They never get hot. Previously when I used IBT2s for my front motors, they would frequently get hot, and that's why I ended up double heat sinking my IBT2s, having a heat sink on the top and the bottom to try and cope with that. Even doing that though, ultimately led to them going into protection mode reasonably frequently depending on what was happening in the game. The other issue too of course is that your Sabertooth 2x32 does handle data much cleaner and faster than the IBT2s. So depending on the quality of the track, if you're in a racing sim or your flight sim, because that does vary as well, you will get cleaner, crisper response from your motors using a Sabertooth 2x32, in my opinion. Now, after using IBT2s on my front motors to pitch and roll, the heave, so road surface heave, etc., using IBT2s in that application, and then using a Sabertooth 2x32, I can tell you 
that the Sabretooth 2x32 has much more fidelity, much more clarity in what comes through your motion sim. Whether it's worth the huge difference in money, we're talking about about $12 Australian to buy an IBT2 controller. You need two for your front motor, so that's about $30, say, $30 for two IBT2 controllers versus $250 Australian dollars for a Sabretooth. So whether it's worth that clarity and fidelity, that comes down to the individual and your budget, okay? I had the money to buy the Sabretooth 2x32. I got sick of my um, IBT2s going into protection mode sometimes, so my sim dropping and shutting down and having to wait for it to start again um, after 20 seconds or whatever because the IBT2s had gone into protection mode. Because I got sick of that, I decided to go with the 2x32 Sabretooth, and I've never had that problem since, okay? So that's another thing to consider. Like I said, IBT2s are not designed to put up with current returning to them from polarity changes because of change of direction in your motors. The Sabretooth does, okay? It's designed to uh, manage regenerative current, and so you don't have these shutdowns anymore with the 2x32. That's been my experience, all right? My other experience, guys, is using Adreno Shields. Uh, definitely um, highly recommended. Shields allow you to hard solder all of your wiring into a shield and then put the shield onto your Adreno Uno R3s. So then you can hardwire all of your wiring or you can use the screw terminals found on Adreno Shields and you can clamp your wiring correctly after tinning it for a much, much more secure setup than com wires, just using the Adreno Uno R3s. When I was using my genuine Adreno Uno R3s, they only facilitate plug-in com wires, okay? So they're pretty flimsy, okay? They don't have great connections, those plug-in com wires. So purchasing a couple of cheap $15 Adreno shields, you need two shields, but you can hard wire and solder all of your wiring to the shields, or as I say, you can use the screw terminals for a really good clamp on wiring if you choose to do that instead of soldering. A must. Now, the other thing I wanna quickly talk about, guys, is how this is basically wired in parallel with a 12 volt car battery, okay? The 12 volt car battery, the big plus for this guys is if you get the right sort of battery this is a 720 cold crank amp battery here okay vehicle battery this was in uh, a high compression v8 engine that i have in one of my cars this was the um, battery for that so it's 720 cold crank amps and it's a 75 amp hour battery it provides all the amps i ever need for my motors now some people are scared of using car batteries. I only used power supplies back when I first set up my three degree freedom motion sim. But even using 50 amp power supplies, guys, they just can't provide amps like a deep cycle lead acid car battery can, all right? Your power supplies will also go into protection mode if they are called on to draw big amps. Or again, if regenerative current is sent back to your power supplies, it will also shut them down. The battery is wired in parallel between the power supplies, the battery and the motor controllers, and then inevitably the motors. So any regenerative energy goes to the battery first. The battery acts as a power soap, okay, and protects your motors, controllers, all right? Now, the Sabretooth, it's not a huge deal because the Sabretooth is designed for regen current, though it is recommended more for the 2x60 um, amp Sabretooth to run a battery. You can <clears throat> run the 2x32s, two power supplies, but it is highly recommended also to use a battery. So my 50 amp power supplies that used to run my two front motors, they're now wired in parallel together to make 100 amp. They go to my battery first, all right? So they're in essence, they've become a glorified battery charger. They keep, they're floated because they're an adjustable voltage on my power supplies. They're floated at about 13.8 volts on each power supply. They're wired in parallel. They go to my battery terminal, okay, which goes on the, so positive and negative. 
because you've got positive and negative on your power supplies. They go to your battery terminals. They keep the battery charged, all right? And the battery provides the voltage and the amps for the front motors. This is only on the front motors via the Sabertooth 2x32. You don't need, or well, I don't need, a battery in between my IBT2s because my horizontal motors are not lifting. They're only running on wheels. So they never see big regen current. So my IBT2s never get hot running the horizontal motors. So they are fine. I can have that combination of cheap IBT2s running my traction loss motor and my surge motor. And then I use the more expensive high amp carrying 2x32. And that's eliminated all issues with shutdowns, protection modes, both in power supplies and what was happening with the IBT2s. That doesn't happen anymore. And because I use the big battery to the front motors, which control our pitch roll and carry all the weight of the sim, I no longer have any issues with not enough amps when those front motors need them. So all of those issues are gone using this setup. So what I will talk about quickly that's not covered in any of my other videos is how I've wired the power supplies for the battery. Now, I couldn't really find anything substantial anywhere about how to actually do this. I've picked up little bits and pieces from a range of different forums on the internet about how something like this could be wired up. And I think technically speaking, really it would be better to have a good quality truck charger basically charging your 12 volt battery. All right, I didn't have one of those. Originally I started with a car charger and the car charger just couldn't keep up. It would get quite hot trying to keep this charged at the same time as this was uh, using current when the sim was operating. So what I've ended up doing from some information I found on the web is I've ended up using basically my power supplies that used to solely control my front motors as glorified battery charger for the battery. All right, so these are 50 amp power supplies that used to run each motor. They're now wired in parallel. So the two power supplies are actually wired in parallel together to create 100 amps, all right? They're wired together. So one power supply is wired into the other power supply. This power supply then runs out from this power supply to a to one of my battery terminals here. Okay, this is how I've got it wired up. This is one of these cutoff um, terminals that doesn't work properly, so I just take the terminal off. When I wanna separate the battery from the system, I just remove the positive side terminal. You could remove the negative, it just happens to be the positive that I'm removing. So, power from the power supplies, which are floated. Okay, these are adjustable power supplies. I float these at 13.8 volt both of them the same and I found that that basically gives you a solid trickle charge all the time for the battery all right and I've right run the sim for um, about an hour I had somebody on the sim and I had my multimeter and I was keeping an eye on what was happening with the battery to make sure that the battery wasn't being overcharged by using power supplies or undercharged and it basically pretty much sat around 13.8 volts to the battery while the sim was being used, using power supplies, like I've just said, to basically keep charge to the battery. So both after, so after the power supplies are wired in parallel, the negative side and the positive side go to the negative side of the battery, the positive side of the battery, to the battery terminals. Then. A negative terminal comes out. Now this is for my Sabertooth 2x32, okay? This is for the front motors. One of the negative, a negative is then taken from the negative side of the battery into the negative side of the Sabertooth here, all right? For reference, this wiring from the power supplies to the battery and from the battery to the Sabertooth, this is eight millimeter gauge wire. So eight millimeter in Australia. I'm not sure what that would be in America. They're heavy gauge wires. The Sabertooth allows eight to 10 millimeter wire. I don't think you get more than 10 millimeters in there. Whereas your IBT2s, you're struggling to get a six mil wire into their main terminal block for the power. So it shows you straight up that the Sabertooth 
it's made for bigger current. It's made to handle bigger current, bigger amp, okay? So eight millimeter wires for neg and pos. So neg and pos comes out of the power supplies for the negative side of the battery, for the positive side of the battery. Then positive, then a positive wire is run from the positive side of the battery to the positive side input of the saber tooth. Same with the negative side is then also put into the saber tooth. That's the power that goes to the saber tooth that then supplies the power to my motors. That's how that's wired up. And like I said, guys, this has been running now for easy six months. Like I said, I spent at least an hour with somebody on the sim while I did frequent checks of the battery to make sure that the battery wasn't being overcharged and getting into a dangerous condition using the power supplies. It never went into overcharge mode. I only have my power supplies turned on and connected to this battery when I'm using my sim, okay? And it's all, and it's and I know that it's using voltage the whole time that it's been charged with voltage. I would not leave this battery sitting and being charged by these power supplies because they're not designed to do that. But they seem to be working perfectly fine when the sim's being used and there's a balance of current going out and current going in. That's all I can say about that. That is the new wiring that is not in any of my other tutorials. As I said, guys, at the beginning of the video, the actual schematics and the actual process of wiring your IBT2s to one Audrino is the Rufus Doofus tutorial on xsimulator.net. See in the links of the description for that tutorial and the Blazing H tutorial for the Sabertooth 2x32 to the other Arduino, I will have in the links in the description. You will need to work through those methodically to work out your pinouts for your IBT2s to your Arduinos and the pinouts, which is only two wires on the Sabertooth to the Arduino versus five wires for the IBT2s. See those links for how to go through wiring this up to work. In the next video, we'll discuss then how we set this up in SIM tools, so then the SIM and all four motors work together for your four degree of freedom motion SIM in your games, in Windows, via SIM tools, etc. That's the next video. We're gonna leave it there, guys. I hope this is uh, giving you a good overview and a little bit of personal experience myself about the different hardware that can be used basically between the two preferred controllers that people use mostly and which one in my opinion and from my experience is better. Until I see you guys in the next video about how to get this all working in the SIM tools interface, you guys stay safe, stay healthy and take it easy out there.